Hello and welcome to everybody in this particular session on Delta Live Tables. So here we are going to start understanding Delta Live Table right from the beginning itself. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, you guys can go ahead, check out my YouTube channel. You guys can connect with me on LinkedIn. And in case you guys need any one on one session related to any technical, uh, you know, topics or uh, related to your resume review or maybe an interview session you guys can book it on top mate apart from that you can also check my website bhavna bedi at the rate graphy.com so let's move ahead so when we talk about delta live table pipeline it is very important to understand the fundamentals delta live table pipelines will be very easy if you actually understand the fundamental itself so usually in any organization what do we do you know, we have in almost most of the projects, in most of the data projects that we have, we are ingesting the data maybe from Kafka, maybe from Data Lake, maybe from any XYZ sources using, you know, uh, either you are using Kafka topic or you are using, uh, you know, maybe any connector, maybe a JDBC connector connecting to a SQL uh, database, trying to ingest the data from multiple sources. You are just ingesting the data from multiple sources into the data lake and then you are creating a lake house right you are creating a bronze layer you are creating a silver layer you are creating a gold layer so in case you are not aware of this bronze silver and gold layer concept no worries so essentially what you are doing you are ingesting the data from multiple sources and then bronze layer you are just keeping the data as it is you are not changing the data silver layer you are a little bit cleaning up the data gold layer you are aggregating the data for the business requirements. So you have this whole setup and then maybe your BIN reporting, maybe your analytics or maybe your data science and ML team might use this data to get the business insights from it. So this is what our foundation is of Lake House. Now, where does this DLT fit in over here? We are going to discuss that. So this is a very neat, clean and a fresh diagram basically you know that explains you how existing structure is now here there is a problem that comes in with this structure because if if in an organization you are getting the data from multiple different sources through multiple different connectors you end up creating multiple raw layers you end up creating multiple bronze layer you end up creating multiple silver layer you end up creating multiple gold layers and then you combine those gold layers so you can see in this particular diagram right the white databases in the middle over here so what is happening so you have the data source in the orange over here one two three four and then you are creating multiple ingestion layers then you are creating multiple silver layers and then multiple gold layers so there is no and in this particular structure if you see it is very complex it ends up becoming complex in a larger organization the data quality and the reliability both are at cost because here there is no hard check on the data quality right you also face issues related to the lags right so this becomes a little complex structure when you actually implement it in a large organization where you have multiple sources so now what happens here whenever we are building such pipelines right what exactly do we do we do version control right we do we create a deployment infrastructure because whenever code is ready we need to have a version control in place we need to have a deployment infrastructure in place and similarly we also need to have data quality checks right you will mo mostly manually write those data quality checks and similarly you will have some kind of governance in place you know these might be a different plugs that you might put in in your existing infrastructure or you can use databricks itself for the same now similarly if you see backfill handling dependency management you know if one pipeline is dependent on another right so that kind of dependency management your data partitioning or you know anything related to checkpointing you know and similarly the data uh, data quality and as well as the performance part everything is just maintained by you so you are actually whenever you are building this particular diagram what is exactly happening everything is being maintained by you you are caring about the infrastructure you are caring about the deployment you are caring about the data quality checks you are caring about the backfill handling you are also checking the checkpoints right in case you are streaming right you have 
uh, checkpointing in place you also have you know the uh, performance tuning in place now what happens is with all of these components being managed by you what exactly happens you are getting deviated from the main work what is your main work so your main work is this that is highlighted over here so your time is actually spent in everything apart from the main thing which is curating your bronze curating your silver curating your gold layer accurately instead of that instead of focusing or instead of you know uh, curating these three layers your time is spent in the quality checks your time is spent you know in building the lineage and everything right but this focus is reduced so delta live table pipelines actually helps you over here now if you see your time should actually focus on getting value from the data right your time should be actually focused on building the sql queries in building the whole piece of code or in applying the business logics which will create your bronze silver and the gold layer but now here just because of the delta live table pipeline so anything beneath if you see this banner over here delta live tables anything beneath this the full refresh dependency management expectations incremental computation checkpointing and retries spark and the delta lake everything is managed by the delta live table pipeline so that you can actually reduce the complexity of your workload by adding a delta life table which will take care of your full refresh or any kind of dependencies that you might have any kind of data quality checks or expectations you might have we are going to discuss each and every component so don't worry on that first we will discuss theory then we are going to do the practical as well but you need to understand why do you have delta life tables in the first place right so this is the basics so here the full refresh dependency management expectations incremental computing checkpoint retries everything is managed by delta live table itself you are not doing anything in databricks you just have your repos you have your unity catalog you have your databricks workflows rest everything is managed when you create a delta live table pipeline even the performance part if you have any lag in your data even that is managed by the delta live table pipeline so that is what delta live tables is all about so now if you see the difference between this particular diagram where you have delta live tables right everything beneath is is maintained by dlt and if you go here in this particular diagram everything is mostly managed by you only and you're not able to focus on the middle part now here especially because of the delta live tables you are actually able to focus on creating the queries and creating the transformations which are going to help you internally so this is the introductory and the very basic session on delta life tables so stay tuned until the next session where we are going to discuss this in little more depth so thank you so much for being till here